come back and learn the characteristics of enzyme catalyst. So already we have studied what is an enzyme. So we said the enzymes are biochemical uh, uh, agents or substances which are produced by your living organisms. So they are going to catalyze different uh, reactions the specific basically. So whenever they ask me about enzyme catalysis characteristics, uh, two important things which you have to say is enzymes are most are highly efficient in nature right then they're going to like so you know they're not going to initiate but when you add them to that reaction they're going to if, uh, take that particular reaction to the equilibrium state so most important thing is enzymes if they ask me to write the characteristics i'll start my answer saying that specifying these two words so that the examiner knows you have a clear idea so enzymes are highly efficient and they are highly specific in nature highly specific right so you have to be very careful in answering right so let us start with the uh, explanation how to write with the uh, in the exam so first as soon as that question is given to you try to make a tabular column because you'll have every, all the data uh, given in the tabular column done so I, I, let us start. So when I speak about this characteristics, then first most important I've already mentioned. Let us write that the characteristic uh, of this is enzymes are highly efficient in nature. So what do I mean by that? That means if I have to take one molecule of an enzyme, so one molecule. What is the mode of action? Mode of action means how is it going to show its action in a human body or living organism? So I'm going to write one molecule of an enzyme. Even if I take one molecule of an enzyme what is it going to do it is going to increase the activity of or convert that reactant into million molecules of reactants so what does it do one molecule of an enzyme converts I'll give you an example you'll understand that converts reactant molecules into millions means that fast is the reaction millions so how did I how can I justify this basically suppose if I have to let me write an example if I have to break a peptide bond so you very well know biomolecules have shown you what is a peptide bond so if I have to break a peptide bond at room temperature so you do you know how much time it's going to take it's going to take 400 years to break that peptide bond at room temperature it seems such difficult it is to break the bond so how many years I said 400 years now if I add an enzyme to this immediately like you know the reaction is the rate of the reaction increases that's why I said that uh, enzyme activity is highly efficient you keep adding it will allow to the peptide bond uh, cleavage or it's going to uh, catalyze the reaction or increase the efficiency of the reaction not catalyze it's going to increase efficiency of the reaction and the product is formed so I've just uh, taken this to 400 years hence enzyme increases the <coughs> or in, uh, increases the efficiency of reaction that is what is your efficiency of reactions now let's come back again i've used this word highly specific now enzyme is highly specific if i have to say so what am I trying to explain? Suppose, let me take one example first. Suppose if I have an uh, enzyme, uh, this in uh, what is this? <clears throat> the pepsin. So, pepsin, what is this? This is specifically a biochemical or biological, uh, this is a biochemical uh, uh, enzyme which is released by or released in the stomach. So, where is this pepsin released? It is released in stomach only. It's specific. It's, it, pepsin will not be released in our throat, isn't it? Where amylase is released. So, this pepsin, wherever it is released in that stomach and it's going to convert your proteins into amino acids amino acids so what are you saying it is specific and it's going to catalyze that particular reaction only right so i'm going to write specific means enzymes are specific to each reaction and catalyze that particular reaction only that 
particular reaction only so particular reaction only now see here i can't just say take this pepsin or a body does not synthesize pepsin in our tongue on the tongue so it's basic or nor in the liver nor this one so simple thing is whenever that mode of action wherever that site of release that particular thing is going to perform only that particular reaction so i said it is highly specific in nature suppose if i speak about the temperature enzymes are you know every uh, enzyme if I have to speak, if it has to show its mode of action, the certain optimum temperature, optimum pH which you have to maintain. If you're not maintaining, the activity of the enzyme is lost. So the optimum pH, or I have to say, enzyme is highly efficient where at <coughs> your optimum temperature. So only at this optimum temperature, it's going to show its activity. Done. So when I have to come back and see the optimum temperature, the optimum temperature which varies is 290 to 300 Kelvin to 310 Kelvin. Then, so our body temperature, what is the human body temperature which is maintained? That is 310 Kelvin, isn't it? That is the reason we have a list of enzymes which are acting to convert into products we have maltase we have urease we have invertase we have diastase we have zymase we have amylase there are different types of enzymes which you know, keep you know that cycle goes on the whole day as soon as we eat our food or whatever reactions have to happen so that particular temperature is maintained in our body hence the activity is observed in this so what do we say optimum temperature high efficiency high efficiency so what is that temp temperature 290 to 300 kelvin so what is the human body temperature human body <coughs> maintained at is maintained at okay, uh, maybe this is particular light here uh, is maintained at which one 310, 310 kelvin so let us write some examples as i said let us list out the examples now i we can write pepsin yes invertase Zymase, lipase, right? So maltase, <coughs> so, so many enzymes, isn't it? I'll be sure we have already studied the table also. So all these enzymes, they they keep activating or catalyzing different biochemical or biological reactions in our body. So let's come back and do the next uh, four characteristics of enzymes. Now let's come back and see the next category. We've already seen the high specificity as well as high efficiency of your enzymes. Now let's see what happens or what are the activators which are going to enhance the uh, um, enzyme activity as well as what are coenzymes, what actually are the coenzymes, what is its role in the enzyme active site. We'll also see what are the effect of inhibitors on the uh, uh, this is action or mode of action of enzymes. So when I have to speak about activators, the list, the big list rather, but specifically for you to remember because they'll give you the answer, <laughs> three marks answer, you're supposed to fill in all the columns. So I'm just going with your NCRT simple uh, thing. <clears throat> Basically, when I speak about your activators, the small, smaller ions like Na plus, right? Your Cu plus two, Cu co cobalt plus two. All these metal ions are going to act. What are they going to do? They're going to fit into the active site. We very well know your enzyme has an active site, isn't it? So when I speak about your enzyme, this enzyme has an active site. These ions are going to fix into this active site. When they fix into the active sites, what is going to happen? They are going to increase the enzyme activity. <coughs> I'll tell you an example also. Enzyme activity. So the efficiency of that particular enzyme will increase. So what is the example? Suppose if I take, now I said Na plus, isn't it? Let us take one enzyme. When I take salivary amylase, so we have amylase in our, which is uh, released in our, uh, by our salivary glands, salivary amylase. What happens is, when we, when the salivary amylase is present, we, we can see this, the taste of this, isn't it? This salivary amylase, when it is present in a salt medium, that is it, in ACL. Suppose this cation, this um, salivary amylase is placed in this, uh, in ACL concentration. So when salivary amylase is placed in sodium chloride concentration you know what happens i said these are going to fix into the active site i said isn't it so when this is present and the effect or the activity of salivary amylase it increases from 4 into 10 to the power of minus 3 normal to 4 into 10 to the power of minus 2 normal so this is how your presence of nacl is going to affect or presence of metal ions going to affect the efficiency of enzymes now you're finding the difference isn't it yes 
and i have to speak about coenzymes so basically if i have to speak in one words i suppose i'm not a biological student i'll just specifically say coenzymes are uh, non proteinaceous compounds so basically like your vitamins so one important thing i can write coenzymes are non proteins or non protein okay non proteinaceous compounds done so non proteinaceous compounds where do they go and fit these also they fit into the active sites only so what do they do they either temporarily fix into the active sites or permanently also fix into the active sites so let's write that word so coenzymes where do they fit they also fit into active sites of enzyme either temporarily or permanently so what is the use of this when they fit into the enzyme <clears> or <throat> this they again it's the same they're going to enhance the enzyme activity for the particular reaction let's see one example temporary and increase enzyme activity done so now <clears throat> what i have to see i said examples isn't it so i said non proteinaceous compounds nothing but vitamins so vitamin b3 vitamin b <coughs> b2 right all these act as coenzymes in the enzyme uh, uh, for increasing the activity so now when i have to come back to effect of inhibitors inhibitors is nothing but which retard the enzyme activity isn't it so in the inhibitors let us write the example first first important suppose i have serine you have already studied isn't it now <coughs> when i when penicillin is added to this to the serine right what does this do basically this when this particular thing combines the the combination what does this penicillin do penicillin here is acting as an inhibitor so what is this going to do it's going to inhibit the enzyme called <coughs> transpeptidase transpeptidase so where is this present this basically this transpeptidase enzyme is used to build up the cell wall of bacteria so this is what is acting now this penicillin i said it is acting as an in inhibitor that is what we have said so what does this do this transpeptidase is used it's an enzyme which is used to build cell wall of bacteria done so because of the presence of this what is happening to the enzyme activity it is retarding isn't it so let us write now effective inhibitors presence of inhibitors presence of inhibitors what do they do they're going to reduce enzyme activity reduce or retard but is retard or reduce enzyme activity yes this is what is your inhibitor examples one example is uh, i've just listed up one example i'm not going to the biological terms of this concept please i'm teaching in terms of chemistry if you start going in the biological concept the subject only will become di different so that's the reason i'm not i'm just giving you one example so let's come back and see the last characteristic of your uh, uh, enzyme that is optimum ph right let's come back and see that example let us come back and see the last characteristics of your enzyme that is uh, your optimum ph so till now what did we learn we have learned highly specific nature we have learned what is the uh, efficiency of an enzyme we have studied what is the uh, optimum temperature then we also studied what is the uh, effect of an inhibitor effect of a cofactor or coenzyme rather and i also start taught you what uh, actually is so what happens when they bind to the active site right so let's come back we, i also taught you about coenzymes isn't it so let's come back and learn one more uh, the last characteristic of your enzyme that is optimum ph so in optimum ph the enzyme activity is very high in optimum ph what range whenever a ph or ph is maintained between 5 to 7 the enzyme activity is enhanced so enzyme activity is enhanced so for you all i just collected enhanced i collected a small data to show you so i said five to seven is an enzyme but in the line pancreas the lipase enzyme which is present the ph to be maintained is eight only for this remaining all just see for urease seven for invertase 4.5 should be the ph for its activity maltase 6.1 to 6.8 catalase 7 pepsin 1.5 to 1.6 so most important thing why did i give this basically in the exam if they ask you what is the effect of 
the ph on enzyme catalyst so see whenever we are writing an answer it is not basically we are not studying uh, normal we are studying a cbse board right so very clear you have to be either completely they will ask or they may pick up in between and ask you certain questions so that's the reason i've given you if they ask you explain the effect of the ph on on uh, the enzyme catalysis so you can write this you can write this and give three or four examples so you can get that i uh, one mark isn't it i don't want you to lose that one mark also so that's the reason so these are your characteristics of enzymes let's come back and do the next topic